In today's episode, a man unknowingly jumps off his boat directly on top of a pack of bull sharks. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying shark attack on Stanley Mullins, devoured by a pack of man-eating sharks. Welcome to Final Affliction. Shark attacks are the stuff of nightmares. They're what horror movies are made of. And yet, considering the number of people who enter the water each year, they are still quite rare. But there are a few conditions which make shark attacks more likely to happen. In this shark attack, a few of these conditions may have played a role. Attacks are more common in water that is warmer than 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 Celsius. This is probably because these temperatures are more appealing for swimmers and so more people enter the water when it's warmer. Attacks also tend to occur during dusk and dawn, when sharks are most active, or just after noon, which is when most people go for a swim. They are also more likely to occur at the surface of the water or in choppy seas. Our swimming movements are more erratic at the surface or in turbulent water, and we may be considered distressed prey, a magnet for sharks. We may even be misidentified as another prey animal, such as a sea lion, when we are silhouetted against the surface of the water. Some of these reasons for attacks seem to have been the cause for a fatality that happened in Australia back in 1959. Two young men, Stanley Mullins and Raphael Bishop, headed out to sea in the early morning of December 19th. The water temperature in the Coral Sea around Brisbane at that time of year is typically high 70s to low 80s, or 24 to 27 degrees Celsius. The sun was already making its way high into the sky. The sea was rough. Wavelets broke on the surface of the water, churning up the sand beneath. Visibility in the water was low. Stanley and Raphael made their way to Wynnum in Moreton Bay, situated just south of Brisbane. The bay is home to numerous islands, including North Stradbroke Island, Moreton Island, and the Southern Moreton Bay Islands. These islands offer a range of activities, such as swimming, surfing, snorkeling, and hiking. They are a popular destination with tourists and locals alike. The region is home to a variety of wildlife, including dolphins, turtles, and seabirds. Also prowling the waters are sharks. Since records of shark attacks began in 1962, there have been 39 attacks off the coast of Brisbane, six of which proved fatal. Stanley and Raphael unloaded their vehicle and dragged their dinghy across the sand and into the water. Holding it steady against the breaking waves, they climbed in. Each with an oar in hand, they paddled against the rushing water. They made it out beyond the breakers and continued to paddle until about a mile and a half from the shore. Then they stopped. They were spending the morning crabbing from the boat. It was a pastime that they both enjoyed, being out on the water, away from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The boat was rocking in the choppy surf, but the two friends were used to it. They hauled in the crabs, filling up their buckets with ease. The day was going well. It was an enjoyable start to the day, and the two friends would be back home in time for breakfast. But the sound of their voices, the vibrations of the sea hitting the sides of the boat, and the smell of the fresh bait enticed something closer. A predator was lurking nearby under the waves. Through curiosity and always on the lookout for an opportunistic meal, a bull shark circled the murky waters below. It was watching and waiting. It was investigating the little boat bobbing up and down in the sea. It was curious. As Stanley lowered his line into the water once more, he accidentally knocked his oar overboard. They needed it to get back to shore. It would be tough with only one oar against the rough sea. In the choppy water, it was getting further and further away from the boat. Without hesitating, Stanley pulled off his shirt and dived into the water. He swam a few yards and grabbed hold of the oar. The salt water stung his eyes. The salt spray slapped his face. He turned around and headed back to the boat. The oar floated on the surface of the water, and he pushed it along in front of him, back towards the dinghy. Raphael continued to dangle his line over the side of the boat. His friend would be back on board in no time. 
Stanley was only feet from the boat when he felt a sharp tug on his legs. He cried out a heart-wrenching scream. Raphael quickly jumped to the other side of the boat. He leaned over the side to help his friend, but it was too late. Stanley had vanished. He had disappeared below the surface of the ocean in an instant. One second he was there, and the next he was gone. Raphael frantically looked around for his friend. He couldn't see any trace of him. There was no blood, there were no bubbles or ripples, no splashing or thrashing. He had only managed to let out a single cry before becoming completely submerged, never to be seen alive again. Shocked, devastated, and terrified after an extensive search for Stanley, Raphael made it back to shore. He called the authorities and recounted the story to them. It was a mystery. Although a shark was suspected, some officials suggested heart failure or cramp as there was no sighting of a shark. There hadn't been a struggle which was usually witnessed with shark attacks. Perhaps it had been such a large shark that it had practically swallowed him whole. Maybe it had dragged him underwater so quickly that it didn't leave a trace. Or maybe multiple sharks dragged him down. His family and friends needed answers. Soon, there would be some evidence, but it might produce more questions than answers. Three days after his disappearance, professional fisherman Desmond Burks was fishing just off the coast of Wynnum. He had heard of Stanley's disappearance, and now he was fishing in almost exactly the same spot. He spotted something in the water, a terrible and disturbing discovery. Upon closer inspection, it was the body of a young man, the body of Stanley. Desmond pulled him aboard and called the officials to report the finding. The 29-year-old was missing an arm. He had several bites across his body reminiscent of a shark attack, but when his body was examined by medical professionals, it was believed that he had been subjected to multiple attacks. Different bite marks on his body were made by different sharks. Had Stanley been killed by a group of sharks? A pack? The local newspapers seemed to think so as they described how father of five Stanley Mullins had been torn apart by a pack of bull sharks whilst swimming offshore. It was a tragic incident. He had been taken so young and left behind a young family. Five children were now without their father, but is it likely that he was killed by more than one shark? A feeding frenzy? Surely there would have been some evidence during the attack if there had been multiple sharks in the area. Surely Raphael would have seen some kind of commotion in the water. Had he really dived right into the middle of a pack of sharks to retrieve his oar without knowing it? Bull sharks are considered extremely dangerous for humans due to their aggressive tendencies and ability to swim in both fresh and salt water. They can travel up rivers and are found near estuaries and shallow coastal waters, the same waters that people often frequent. The females are the larger of the two sexes and can grow up to 8 feet long and weigh up to 130 kilograms or 290 pounds. But bull sharks are typically solitary hunters, only occasionally coming together in pairs to track prey. During certain times of the year when fish populations are concentrated, multiple sharks may gather in a small area to feed. This feeding frenzy can involve several individuals hunting together. Maybe this was the case with Stanley. It is not known exactly what happened to Stanley. It is most probable that he was taken by a shark, a large one that caught him completely unawares and took him below the surface without a struggle. It is possible his body was then scavenged by other sharks before being found by the fishermen. Despite tragic and terrifying events such as that of Stanley Mullins, the odds of being attacked by a shark are as tiny as 1 in 3 billion. Although these cases are extremely rare, if the attack happens to you, then it doesn't matter how rare it is, you will still be fighting for your life inside the jaws of one of nature's most powerful and formidable predators, praying that you survive and avoid meeting your terrifying final affliction.